Hi, everybody. Welcome to Mark's Backyard Birds. Tonight, I am talking about one of my favorite topics, and that is binoculars. Um, if I've been getting a lot of questions this time of year because a lot of people are getting out and they're going on vacation and they're going to baseball games and, and of course, they're bird watching and they get a lot of questions about binoculars. And I know it, when binoculars are intimidating for some people. Right? People love come in the store to buy binoculars and they have a lot of questions and there's a lot of misunderstanding. And so my goal here is to help you make an informed decision uh, about uh, a purchase of a pair of binoculars. You will never regret buying a good pair of binoculars. So like I said, for baseball games, for uh, Starlight Theater or rock concerts. We when we were the Rolling Stones years ago. We were way back, but the binoculars helped so much. But bird watching, I, it's a way of life for me. And, and and if you're watching me, you probably are interested in um, birds and, and nature viewing. And you probably own a pair of binoculars, or you maybe you've inherited a pair of binoculars, a pair of binoculars from the family. And uh, but you may be looking for making a new investment. And so what do the numbers mean? What should I look for? What sizes are best for birding uh, and for nature viewing? And what's too much? What's too little? What's the difference between, you know, a hundred dollar pair of binoculars and a thousand dollar pair of binoculars? We're going to cover all that. So let's get started. And you're going to, I'm going to say right off the bat, you're going to hear me say this more than one time tonight. I'll definitely say it at the end is my theory for 40 years, believe me, June of 1983 is when I started bird watching. So I had a, a pair of binoculars I bought from pawn shop. So uh, it, it, they, it's evolved over time for me, and I'm going to give you some stories that will help illustrate the differences in good binoculars. But for 40 years, I've been having this talk and, and trying to advise people. But what I say is spend up to the level of your interest or you'll regret it. And I'll repeat that more than once and I'll give you some examples of, of why you do that. So uh, binoculars, what are the basics of binoculars? Well, first thing I'm gonna show you a two different pair. Um, and this is the, 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 the breakdown of uh, binoculars in a Poro, uh, oh, wrong one, Poro prism design and a roof prism design. Uh, well, shaped like an H and shaped like an M. Now, if you've been bird watching a long time, you probably, be, this is the, what's normal for you, what you're used to seeing in a pair of binoculars. This is a classic old design, uh, been around forever. Uh, and these are the newer, uh, I say newer now, they've been around for 35 years, 40 years. Uh, and these are the standard that you see when you go out and you see people bird watching, almost all of them have this. And there are advantages and disadvantages. Uh, but for the most part, um, new technology, uh, uh, new glass, new prisms, new uh, uh, coatings on the lenses and color clarity, these are now the standard. Uh, these are a little bit better at, at utilizing the light that comes in. But like I said, the, the new coatings and stuff have made up a lot for that. So roof prism versus poro prism. Poro prisms are the standard now. So this is this guy. And when you first start studying about binoculars or looking at binoculars, the first thing that people will notice is there's two numbers. There's two sets of numbers. And let's see if I can get this turned around. And right up here above the word Nikon, this one says eight and then an X and then a 30 in there. Okay. What do those numbers mean? Oh no. Okay. The numbers are usually, if you think of your eye as a one, your eye is one power, especially if you, you know, glasses or contact lenses, things like that. Your doctor has made sure, okay, they're one. So when you see the number seven, eight, 10, 12, that means that much times your vision. So seven times more powerful than your, your eyes alone. Eight times, 10 times, 12 times. Well, with that logic, oh my gosh, I want 15s or I want 20s. Why don't we just have them really, really strong so I can see really, really far? Ooh, hold on, pump the brakes because that num those numbers do have their pluses and their minuses and their, their advantages and disadvantages. Uh, the lower the number, the, the, the least powerful that it is magnifying, the advantages of those are you get a wider field of view. So when you put the binoculars up, a seven power binocular is going to have a much, give you much wider field of view than a 10 because a 10 power binocular is going to be much narrower. So for, especially if you're a new binocular user or 
maybe you're uh, you have a, a little shake in your hands uh, or um, you're just not confident at putting the binoculars up and to help you find the bird that you want to see. Well, the sevens with that wide field of view gives you, a, 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 you know, the bird has hopped over here. You've got them in the field of view. Tens, it's a much narrower field of view. Yes, you get to see the bird, a bit, uh, you know, a little bit bigger, but you've got to be better at putting the binoculars on the, the bird whenever you are, you're using them. So in the other part of that, I said that about that little bit of a shake. Well, seven and eight power binoculars are easier to hold steady versus tens, which amplify if you've got any kind of a little shake. And so like if you're holding binoculars and you're waiting for this bird to hop out behind a leaf and it's longer and longer, it's in there, you're waiting, 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 and your hands start to shake a little bit, tens will look a little swimmy to you. And that can be frustrating for folks. Um, but, you know, the people who maybe take medication or something that makes their hands have a little shake, then seven and eights are far better than tens and definitely twelves. I don't know anybody personally that uses twelve power binoculars and and uh, for bird watching. And we'll get more into that here in just a second. Well, that second number uh, is usually 30, 35, 40, 42, 50. And that is the size at this end of the binocular. This is the eye where we put our eyes. Well, the other end of the binocular, who let's see, get my camera straight is this end right here in millimeters. So that is how big that opening is. And that's the end that lets in the light. So whether your image is going to be brighter or dimmer, well, oh God, well, then I want a 50 or a 60 or an 80. Well, why don't we have the bigger number at that end? Well, mainly it's weight because the glass is heavy. And so the bigger that other end is the heavier your binoculars are and nobody wants to lug around a boat anchor around their neck especially if you're hiking and you're walking you know trails and things like that so what's it's come down to is you know once binocular companies realized that the bird watching market it was a viable uh place for them to invest their their research and their money into you know it used to just be hunters and things like that well bird watchers said here's what we want and the company started listing because they were selling enough of them. So when it, it, the, the light ratio, the amount of the, the size of this end of the people versus the power, all that got studied tremendously in the field of view and everything. And what's come down to for bird watching and nature viewing, the classic size is really eight by 40. And then it can be a little bit Seven, it can be a little less, a little strong, less, less strong, and then more, a ten. I've used tens since college, and I just can't not. I can't go back. I've tried going back to using eights. Um, if I ever do get to go to the rainforest and and Central America, hopefully one day, and it's really really dark in the rainforest, I probably will take a pair of eight binoculars because they're they're more light friendly. They utilize the light better than the tens. The strength of that that extra power makes them a little light hungry. So. The eight power is, but it's really the normal. And I, we sell more eights in our store than we do tens because we have a lot of new binocular users. And we have, you know, people who are just not as confident in finding birds. And 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 that's a smart buy. That's what you really should. So eight by 40, seven by 35. Uh, if you're a, if you want to stargaze, you want to look through at the stars through your, your binoculars, um, having a 50, millimeter exit pupil is a good investment because they it, for light at night that's really important but 50 is is overkill for bird watching just because of the weight and 8 by 40 is a or a 10 by 40s are, are a good size binoculars for everything that you want to do in, in the in the bird watching and nature viewing world so those are those two numbers now another number that you will see um you'll see on there a lot of times it'll have a a degrees on it and eight degrees, six degrees. And if you think of 360 degrees, you think of that's the, the field of view. So eight degrees at a thousand feet. So the best way to test that for you is to look through eights and look through tens and see it, it, that, that field difference. You know, when at our store, we can look across our shopping center and the, the, the strip across from us, there's uh, columns on that side of the shopping center. I get people to put the glasses up and see how many of those columns they can count. And it shows the difference between the eight powers and the 10 powers in that field of view. So, and, and that, that can be a convincing thing for folks, that's for sure. So, um, so there's your, your numbers. You, you want a, a 
ma more magnification or do you want more field of view? Do you want, uh, you know, other numbers too, like close focus. Some people uh, love binoculars that they can, they can actually look at the top of their shoes with. Uh, in the bird watching world, usually under 10 feet, under eight feet uh, is good for a close focus on a binocular. So you can look at, you know, you can look at a butterfly on a, on a flower right below you and stuff and get all the details. I have a friend who takes her binoculars to the art gallery. And she loves looking at the paintings through uh, binoculars that she can close focus and she can see the detail in the, br uh, the brush strokes. There's, there's lots of uses for binoculars and they're wonderful, wonderful investments. So we're, one of the other important things you want to know when it comes to, to buying them, uh, I'm going to mention it again, spend up to the level of your interest. And here we go with, well, in the case, there's a, $79.99 pair of 8x40s. There's a $319 pair of uh, 8x40s. And then there's a $1,000 pair of 8x40s. And there's ranges in between. What are the difference in all those glasses? There's not, it's not the strength and it's not the exit pupil. It's the materials. So think of any hobby you have or have ever had in knitting needles, uh, guitar playing, uh, tennis rackets, golf clubs, anything like that. You know, within any hobby and the things that you lose, use, there's always good, better, and best. And it's that's why I started with spend up to the level of your interest, because there is a difference between um, a, a lower quality pair. They might look really good to you um, and, and they'll get you by, but you get into the bird watching hobby and you really start looking at birds more and you travel, especially. Um, I wrote, I, I ran an ad one time um, years ago, and it was a picture of people on safari. They were in the back of the truck and they were looking at giraffes in the distance. And my caption for the ad was, we came all this way, spent all this money and didn't buy the Nikons. Uh, and, and, and that's so true. I had a family uh, a few years ago, they were going down to Belize uh, uh, on vacation and they weren't bird watchers, but they were going to go on nature tours and the rainforest and things. And the dad, we were having this conversation before they left. And I, I, I convinced him to buy a really nice pair of binoculars. I said, you're going to get down there and you're going to get to see, you know, monkeys and, and some of the most beautiful birds on the planet. And you're going to be looking through them in cheap binoculars and you're not going to get the full causal resolution and you're not going to really appreciate it. And he did. He bought a really good pair of binoculars. When he came back, he thanked me profusely. He said, you know, we had two other pair of binoculars after the first day. Nope. We just left them in the room. Nobody wanted to even look through them. They, they, all they wanted to look through was the good ones. It does make a difference. It, and, and I know it's easy to go, oh, they can't be that much better. Uh, I can give you many, many stories of the difference. And, and the differences are, you know, the materials that the binoculars are made of. So uh, they're strong and lighter with, with, with more advanced materials. They have better cut glass. They have better prisms in there. They, they have coating, the term multi-coated prisms, things like that. All those make a difference in the quality of the image that you're seeing. Um, I'm, I'm all the time, I lead bird, I've been leading bird hikes for 40 years. And like I said, we'll be out and we'll, we'll be seeing a bird and we'll start, you know, describing it. Uh, oh, there's blue and there's, there's white. And then, and somebody will say in yellow and I'll go, mm, no, there's no yellow in that bird. Um, but look, they have really cheap binoculars and there's something called chromatic aberration where just the bending of light around Im a, a, an image, a dark image against the light background and one, and it shades yellow. And so, uh, you know, uh, great binoculars do away with that almost entirely. And it's, it's really important. Uh, and that's when you start to notice the difference between good binoculars and great binoculars. Uh, so I, one example I will give you real quickly is we were on a bird trip years ago up in Duluth, Minnesota, and we were looking out on the lake at some at a flat of ducks. I had a van full of you know, bird watchers with me, and I was naming off the ducks that were out there. And I had some really good bird watchers with me. They they knew them as well. And and then I said, and a redhead, which is a type of duck that Hank obviously has a red head. And one of my most experienced bird watchers was in the van, and she said, "How do you know that's a redhead?" I said, "Because it has a red head." And she said, "No, it doesn't." I said, "Yes, it does." And she had a medium uh, pair of binoculars. They were pretty good, but they weren't great. I said, here, look through these. 
and I handed her my upper end binoculars and she looked through it and she went, Oh my goodness. And she said, and, and I'll tell you the truth. We got back from that trip and within a week, her and her husband came in and they bought those binoculars. Uh, she, she was absolutely floored that the difference in the image that she got through my binoculars versus hers. So it, it does make a big difference. And if you're serious about the hobby, that really, really will help you. So there are, are some other things about binoculars I want you to uh, think about whenever you're, you're, you're buying them. Uh, one of them is, and, and almost all uh, binoculars today now have what are called twist up eye cups and they twist back down. So if you wear glasses and you need your glasses, you want to hold binoculars right up against your glasses. So you want your eye cups twisted down. But if you don't wear glasses, it's called eye relief. It's the distance between your pupil and the lens of the binocular. That's when you twist the eye cups up and you hold the eye cups against the skin around your eyes. And that's and that gives you the right distance that you need and their click stops so you can adjust them if you want them a little bit down a little bit up but this is a great feature if your wife or, or your partner wears glasses and and you don't and vice versa when you're handing them back and forth to look through you just twist up those eye cups or, or twist them down and it and that'll help you out a lot another thing to think about is and, and most a lot of people don't know that it amazes me uh the people who have come in and used binoculars for years and didn't doesn't know that they don't know why they can't ever get their binoculars in focus. You know, the focus ring is here on top and it you just move it back and forth and that focuses the binocular on the image. We have a dollar bill taped up on the wall of our store when people are looking at their at through binoculars and trying them. And we get people to focus on that dollar bill because everybody knows what a dollar bill looks like. And it's good to see the, the crisp edges of the numbers and things and, and read the serial number, things like that. It's really good practice. But a lot of people don't know, like it, if, if you one eye is stronger than the other. Now you wear glasses, usually your doctor's taking care of that. It, but um, if you, some people have one contact lens that is for reading and one for distance, et cetera, et cetera. Well, that'll mess them up when they try to focus binoculars. But you can independently focus, focus your right eye diopter here from your left one. So if your eyes are a little bit different, you get the left one in focus and then you open your right eye and then this one's already in focus, then you can find adjust your right diopter and get them exactly right. And I have changed people's <laughs> opinion of binoculars wholly by just that one fact to share with them. Uh, and they said, wow, I bought a pair of binoculars at yeah, such and such sporting goods store. And they didn't tell me that. And I was like, well, they probably don't know. But, you know and that, that's why you, know, you want to buy binoculars from people who know what they're talking about so they can help you understand and, and that's what this whole program's about. So yeah, independent focus diopter, um, they uh, had the gross focus on top. And I, I have other programs and we'll put links in them for uh, how to properly focus binoculars. We have one on how to clean binoculars and, and basics, but I thought it was time to, you know, to give binoculars it justice with as many questions as we've been having here lately. And let me make sure, let's see, you know, when it comes to finally making your decision, what what are, what are some of the most uh, important things to remember? The one cost is certainly important to you, but remember that you, what you're going to use them for. If you're mainly going to be looking at long distance, like if you live on a lake and your biggest interest is looking at the geese that are out in the middle of the lake or the loons and things like that, but you, and you're not worried about birds jumping around in bushes, then a 10 power is probably a better investment for you because you you don't have to worry about field of view when you're looking way out, like distance, eagles up in a tree and things like that. But if you're going to use them for day in and day out bird watching in your backyard where the sparrows are jumping around and there's a, then you, again, I'm going to recommend the eights. Um, and unless you really, you know, I, I, the only advantage that a small pair of binocular has it, 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 it is weight. They suffer because they don't let in enough light early in the morning, late in the evening, and in, in really heavy forested area. But you can hike and carry these guys a lot longer than you can one that's a bit a little bit bit larger and heavier. So that's the, the, the things to recap, the things you want to consider whenever you're 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 making the final decision. And again, think of your hobbies. And and if you're gonna in real you really love binocular, you love bird watching and you're going to do more and you're going to decide, you're going to go to, 
Yosemite on vacation and you want to look for white headed woodpeckers and, or you're going to go to the Southeast and you, you're in the swamp or the, the coastal marshes and you're going to be there. I, I, a cheap pair of binoculars show when you look at a blue bird, blue Jay through it, you'll see blue, black, and white. Through a great pair of binoculars, you see nine shades of blue, a couple of shades of black and white on that blue Jay. And it really is that noticeable. When you look through really great binoculars and use them, you will see the difference. So uh, binoculars, you'll never regret buying them. Think about spending up to the level of your interest. I know the medium, the best-selling binoculars that at my store are uh, the Monarch 5s from Nikon. They're just over 300 bucks, I think, somewhere in that neighborhood. Um, and they are outstanding. They're lightweight. They're really good lenses. They're not the best, but they certainly aren't the worst. They're a really good investment. Most of my bird watchers that come on my bird hikes that have you know bought binoculars from me over the years, that's the, the level they settle into because that's where their interest is. And now I've had a few that have moved up now. You know, they're they're in so serious that they really want a really good pair. So you can always go that. My personal binoculars are the Nikon uh, Monarch HGs. I love them. They are fantastic and um, but they are more expensive and they uh, but I do love them so uh, thanks for tuning in tonight sending ideas for future programs if you would give us a like give us a share uh, if you're not subscribed please hit that subscribe button until next time come on let's talk birds